Lights, camera, action! <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux, and I have directed a short film. And I'm Ember, and please never ask to see it. Yeah, I would have to get permission from several people. It, it was a great learning experience, that's all I have to say. But, here's our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 8, Episode 22. What lies beneath? Is it just me? Or was the pony the only one who wasn't facing a fear? If it was fear, it was a subtle fear. The fear of disappointing people he looked up to. Yeah, he didn't really show it anywhere near as much as everyone else. Well, Smolder didn't seem particularly afraid. She was just frustrated. She was afraid of showing that she could appreciate cute things. And appreciate being cute herself. And oh my gosh, that expression. Right before we cut away when she's all dressed up. And she's all smiling and like, ooh. If I had the time, I would draw that. But I'm drawing something else, which you're seeing on screen right now. The blue eyeshadow is so 80s, I'm sorry. <laughs> Though it did match the dress. Very cute dress. I also like the, you're telling no one you saw this. <laughs> when talking to the griffin. Uh, also, this episode seals it. She is evil. Cozy glow, right? It is just plain evil. I'm pretty sure she's working for that one guy. Naysay. But with the way she's looking at the tree, she may be a changeling in disguise. Yes, we know all the episodes have technically been released, but we're watching them one at a time. We're not binging them. Because we don't want to accidentally carry over and discuss a different episode ahead of where we are when doing the recording. So we have to watch, record, stop, watch, record, stop. Also, if you have seen all the episodes, please be respectful of people in the comments and not spoil things. Not like we have enough to have to worry about that, but I thought I'd put this for future people who are actually watching My Little Pony in order and not bidging things. For some strange reason. Because there are people out there who just like to watch slowly over time. But this was a really interesting episode, especially how the tree chose to show itself. I'm specifically talking about the representation of itself as Twilight Sparkle. Well, the tree has a lot of uh, Twilight Sparkle's cutie mark in its overall theme. Also, it grew her a castle. I think it knows her pretty well. Well, we can definitely see that, especially the whole, it grew a castle. Oh, I love that beginning bit. Something about, we're going to talk to a tree or something like that. So, was this before or after Discord made it rain chocolate milk? Because, yes, the history of the Tree of Harmony is very convoluted. Probably because half of it is retcon. Because the pillars planted the tree, the tree garnered the elements, then we got the boxes and the keys, and the super-powered rainbow mains that were never seen again. Except for one time when Pinkie Pie was talking about it. Other than that, no. I mean, because everyone was like, oh my god, that's garish. I actually kind of liked most of the mains. They were a little bit over fluffy, but I can see why people thought they were a little, not over the top per se, but the designs weren't the most thrilling. Going back to the current episode, I also really like how they're building these characters really well and their interactions with each other. They're just building over time and their personalities are really show starting to show through how they interact with each other how they poke fun at each other how they tease each other because gallus doing that spider trick to yona you got to be friends to pull that off especially since they do the classic laugh afterwards mm -hmm. i do love how like, they all fall asleep at the end very cute we just pile on top of each other i'm just trying to think of theories because there's so many obviously the tree finds these six important though it's gallus's fault for asking a tree for help and the other tree overhearing him yeah that makes me think did the main six build this school or did they like somehow summon the tree of harmony to build the school because this tree of harmony has roots underneath the school but the castle apparently is not that far away because you could see it out the window and how far reaching are the tree's roots? Because the tree, isn't it closer to the castle of the two sisters? Yeah. 
Though if you look at the intro, the school's like right across from the castle. Twilight's castle. What about the castle of two sisters? Yes, I was specifically referring to Twilight's castle. I'm thinking maybe that, since it's kind of tree-shaped itself, has roots over in that direction. And I'm thinking it's... I'm going to get the name wrong, so I'm just going to say it starts with an M. The root system that mushrooms have, that basically goes everywhere, mm. is incredibly strong. Hmm. Possible. When you were saying, like, I'm just going to say it starts with an M, for some reason I was also starting to think about the Norse mythology and their tree of, um, I wanted to say life, but that's not correct. It's the interconnecting tree that mm -hmm. all the dimensions link to and how you travel. That's what immediately popped into my head as you were like, I'm not going to pronounce this right, but it starts with this. <laughs> and all the fears really worked well, like the changeling's fear, the hippogriff's fear. And if you think about it, the griffin's fear worked really well, too, because he's used to being in big open areas. So tight and close spaces were um, definitely not a thing. And he probably didn't really encounter them until he started going to school in a building. That's kind of made out of hard stuff and it's really tight. So he probably started like getting an inkling of what that was. And then maybe he found some caves and stuff nearby and really found out like, oh, oh, small space, small space is not good. <laughs> Except the griffins don't live outdoors in Griffinstown. I thought they were kind of on top of like a cliff mountain, -y, mountain -ish -y area. Yes, but they live inside dwellings. Because there's the treehouse style ones and there's the nest style ones. Yeah, but they're pretty open. I think they had like flimsy doors and big open windows. Still, and it's logical for a creature with wings to be claustrophobic. I just kind of found it odd that they were being tested with fear. Because shouldn't it have been more of Hero's Gambit type stuff where you have to surrender something in order to help a friend? Well, the tree said something interesting at the end, that it had no control over what they saw. That you chose what you saw in my roots, which also goes back to your point of saying that sandbars didn't really seem to be quite so fear-based. Because it seemed like more like he wanted to impress them. Less the fear of disappointment and more the um, eagerness to impress. And to please and go on an adventure. You know, and he did try to resist a couple of times. He was like, no, I need to go find my friends. And then they reiterated their elements. And so these were probably the two professors that Sandbar looks up to the most. Generosity and loyalty. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That seems right up his alley. I mean, come on. He and his friends all ran away together in the pilot. And so there you have it loyalty and then also the generosity of going into sugar cube corner and getting all those cupcakes he is a very generous and loyal pony i wonder if each of them actually composes two elements different mixtures something to look into any particular nitpicks you'd like to go over well sandbars wasn't particularly fear-based and most of them were able to get out of their predicaments on their own. You know, Gallus calmed himself down and worked out the puzzle. Smolder surrendered to the tea party. Yona made friends with the spiders. And Sandbar told off his professors. It was only Acellus and the Hippogriff who needed help. And they got help from the griffin and the dragon. And if you think about it, they're also the um, most lighthearted slash kindest ones. They both may um, be really connected to the element of kindness. And, hmm. and the hippogriff, I think I just realized, is laughter and kindness. If we're going dual element, she would be both laughter and kindness. But Ocellus is just like purely kindness. And maybe magic, you know, being a changeling. Hmm. She also seems to be the um, one of the ones that are the most, not really like the others are not intelligent, but the most focused on learning and studying more towards Twilight. So I'm trying to figure out what the griffin and the dragon would be dual-wise. 
They're not really striking me right now as anything in particular. Well, you know it's not generosity, just based on the stereotypes of the griffins and the dragons. It just hit me. I think honesty is the, the um, griffin. Yeah, no filters. And that also fits for Yona, because she's not exactly um, good at dissembling and, you know, social uh, white lies. Hmm. Yes, she, she is very straightforward. Hmm. That also works well for the um, griffin based on that one episode where he lied and then told the truth. So yes, it's almost the end of the season and we're just now comparing the student six to the main six elements. And it could even be dual in a different way, not dual as in the elements of the elements of harmony, but dual as in one main six element and one pillar element, because the pillar elements were slightly different. Hmm. And no, I can't name them off right now, but they did correlate. That's something to look into. It's really interesting and... Also, you know, just in case there was any doubt that these guys are the student six, because the tree was highly interested in them, and the tree was very upset that they were not as one. She specifically said, you are not as one. Because the elements of harmony only work when everybody's together. Because remember the season two intro with Discord. Discord managed to break them up, so even when they brought the elements together, they didn't work. If I had the time, I'd watch all my favorite seasons over again. Parts of them, really, like the beginning of season two and the end of season two. And a couple other episodes sprinkled throughout. And just going back to Cozy Glow, such an instigator. I wish Sandbar would have spoken up a little bit more because he goes, that's not what's going on here. Basically, that's not what's happening. But it didn't go over that way. They're like, yeah, he kind of needed to defend himself right there in order to defend his friends. You know, to say, that's not why we're standing together. We're standing together because we're in the same class and we're friends. And since we're friends, that proves that they don't have a deficit or a dysfunction. Why are you even saying that? Because it was pretty obvious that she was... It was incredibly blatant. Especially having Ocellus out of the way. She was doing great impressions. You can tell she's done that often for them. Most definitely. And then, you know, for Cozy to jump up like that, you're like, oh, is she going to do another impression? And, you know, trying to work her way in to be the Sixth Ranger. That's kind of what I was thinking. She was going to do her own impression, and then suddenly, that's not an impression. I was lied to. Because <laughs> she still could have done it as an impression and gotten under everybody's skin. From the beginning, we thought she was too nice and too sweet. Now we find out that she is evil. So either in Naysayer's pocket, a actual unchanged changeling, or somehow working for Chrysalis. Of all of those, we think the Chrysalis one is least likely. Because Chrysalis isn't really in any condition right now to be employing pony agents. And I almost wonder at this point that maybe the chrysalis we're seeing in this won't be anything in this season. And is actually building up to the next season because from what I understand, season nine is the final season for MLP. Maybe they're building her up for that season since they already know that that's the end. Maybe they already have it planned out for that. Entirely possible because a changeling of chrysalis's type is about as far away from ponies and friendship as blah as you can get. And it would be great if she was the final villain of the series. She is one of the fandom's favorite villains, mostly thanks to that wonderful song. And she is one of the few unredeemed villains. We redeem more than not, because even minor villains have gotten redeemed. I mean, Sombra wasn't really around long enough to count. You know, he was just vanquished. I wonder what happened to that horn. <laughs> I wonder if they're actually going to wrap things up like that. You know, find out what happened. Did he actually, is he actually destroyed? Dead? Blown into pieces? 
And it was definitely a really nice episode. It had good tone, had good pacing. It didn't feel rushed. Everyone was really well done. Even Closey Glow, though I think she was a little heavy-handed. Well, I think she's getting closer to her plans coming to fruition, and traditionally that's when villains start to slip. Mm. And you know that thing at the end of just leave everything to Cozy Glow was mainly for the audience. So like, hmm, is she actually after the tree the whole time? Is Twilight not the target but the tree? If she is working for Nace, why would she be interested in the tree? That's where our theory of her working for Naysayer kind of fades a little bit. Because it worked really well in the beginning and when we had the competing university. Because how else did Flim and Flam get a hold of all of Twilight School's textbooks? A student would be the most logical source. And which student had the flyers for the university? In just the way she was doing things at the beginning, having talking about the that they are already behind because of their natures and stuff like that. That sounds very up they say is alley. Very much so. Because he looks down on other creature species as being dangerous and uncouth. Such a complex that pony has. But then when they get to the whole Tree of Harmony thing, she's like in a different category. So it's like, is she reacting because she's now seeing a new possibility or is she reacting because that was actually part of the larger goal you know is she going to the university to get to twilight who is the focal point of the elements of harmony being that most elusive element of magic and the princess of friendship that's why i'm thinking the whole chrysalis angle because Chrysalis would be interested in the tree. Especially considering the last episode we saw Chrysalis in, where she tried to get to the tree. That's the only thing that's really leaving me up in the air, because her actions so far lean heavily towards Nase. But this that last little bit of her staring at the tree. So what, what would Nase do with the tree? Or is Cozy Glow her own thing? Because she could be. Just because she's this cute, tiny, little, manipulative thing doesn't mean she's necessarily in the employ of somebody else. It's our theory. But, hmm, what Naysayer could do with the tree is use it to protect all of Equestria from hostile other creatures. Friendship as a weapon. Oh yeah, that again. Yeah, but Naysay can't use the tree. Neither can Cozy Glow. Cozy probably knows that. Naysayer probably doesn't. Or Cozy Glow doesn't really know it, but she thinks she can manipulate the tree. Or do something to use the tree. Or something to disable the tree. Because mm. there's always the, well, if I can't use the magical MacGuffin, I'll make sure nobody else can either. Yeah. I think we should wrap things up, or do you have some more stuff you'd like to go over? Just like to go back to Hippogriff enthusiasm. Wow, about plumbing. <laughs> well... Indoor plumbing changed the world. Yes, yes it did. And when you're a sea pony, because it's not really clear how long all the sea ponies were underwater. Was it generations? So are hippogriffs her age born sea ponies and didn't experience being hippogriffs until after the Storm King was defeated? Or are they all just one generation? We don't really know because there is no indication of the timeline other than a fuzzy idea. Because it sounds like Storm King was kind of a thing for a period of time. I just don't know how long because it always felt kind of short to me in the movie. But he was going around rebranding himself. Also, the Storm King got to Tempest at a rather young age. And for him to be controlling that much territory, for the most part, you don't pull that off overnight. Unless you actually have more skills than he did. Yeah, he was kind of a joke and not in the good way in the movie. For top villain, you know, he was really more comic relief. Though he was a decent foil for Tempest to bounce off of. Well, Tempest was the much more serious threat. Just like right now, I think Cozy Glow, whether she's working for Naysayer or, or Chrysalis or none of the above, 
is more dangerous than naysayer. Or Chrysalis, for that matter. At least Chrysalis, as we last saw her. And I still wonder what happened to those negative versions. I know they were absorbed into the tree. I'm talking about, like, what the tree did with that. Yeah, what the tree did with the energies and the personalities and all that. Was that purified, put into the ground, incorporated into the tree? Is that why the tree can now take on physical forms of the main six? Hmm. It says creatures or entities always grow and change. So as the tree continues to grow, learns new things, gets new abilities. The magical MacGuffin has gotten stronger. Oh no! <laughs> it can now talk and theoretically provide us with answers. Hmm. Exposition engine. Oh! So it can explain why all the mystical objects that the school is holding for Celestia will work as the student six elements of harmony. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episode 22, What Lies Beneath. I wonder what they're referring back to with that title. Isn't there a movie called What Lies Beneath? We'd have to look it up. Hi, outro. So yeah, we have videos. You just watch one, so you know that. You can like, subscribe, comment, watch other videos. And then when you're ready to leave YouTube, we have other links. There's links to Lux's art, links to Lux's commission, links to Lux's Patreon, and links to Lux's coffee. If you are not familiar with all of those things, thank you for coming out from under a rock and joining us. Uh, commissions are exactly what they sound like. You ask for something, you get charged a price, and then you get it. Patreon is monthly pledge support, and you get something back. I think your local PBS fundraiser type deal. And coffee is straight up donations, no long-term commitments. Patreon starts at a dollar, coffee works in increments of three. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions. And, of course, financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.